Hey guys, uh, welcome to my channel. I am Daniel Norton, photographer here in New York City, and this is a rebroadcast of my Sunday Twitch editing stream. Uh, on Sundays on my Twitch channel, which you guys can follow me on, uh, I go live about 3 p.m. Eastern, and we look at some of the photos I shot from the weeks before, and we go through using Capture One, and I talk about my process of you know, how I shot them, some other thoughts, you know, that were going on in my head. Also, we go through and we do tweaks and edits, uh, and we just go for it. So this particular one is actually a headshot session that I did for uh, Marissa Roper, who you, if you're familiar with the channel, you probably know, a friend of mine and a great actor. So we're going to go through and edit these headshots, and uh, let's go for it. Uh, you're looking at my desktop. Uh, as noted, as usual, I have two Drobos here that I, I have three, but I have two that I've, I've plugged up all the time. Dribble 1 is the current Drobo. Dribble 2 is, I don't know if I ever showed it. Dribble 2 is like, uh, has archives. So if you go here, you've got uh, uh, back to, uh, wow, 1999. Just like that Prince song. Um, band. Who knows what some of that stuff is. There was, <laughs> I'm guessing that's some Adorama stuff that I won't, we weren't actually, maybe they would let me show it now. I'm not going to show it now. I'm going to get myself in trouble. But uh, yeah, we, we did a few things that, <laughs> that got banned <laughs> for various reasons. Um, that's probably what that is. Anyways, um, in Drobo 1, that's my current one. You can see uh, summer 2019 is here, and then also 2020, which is where we're at. And if we go down to... Um, by the way, con here, if people like to read my thing, is not uh, like conning people, but conventions. Which, clearly, <laughs> not a whole lot. Uh, you know, but, no, that didn't happen. Well, that did happen, actually. That was the last thing I did. Um, uh, where am I? Where my where my photo shoots? Uh, here's the photo shoots we've done so far this year. Not that many, but you know, we got what we got. Um, and we're gonna do this one here, Marissa headshot. Uh, like I've mentioned before, I normally, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure there's a similar feature on the PC. Um, normally, when I'm working on stuff and I have it in my kind of back burner, I'll put it over here. So let's say we already did the Shrina one, but let's say I had that undone as well. I would just leave it over here. So I have like this like list of things I'm working on here. <laughs> Actually, this thing that says work on these. Um, Get rid of that. Let me clean up my desktop while I'm sitting here. Um, so we've got these two. Actually, I already did this one, so let me remove it. So I've got this one. This is Marissa. It's a Capture One catalog. You know, we always shoot tethered when we can. Um, very rarely do I not shoot tethered. So uh, I used to make the mistake, by the way, guys, of when I would do like shoots with like a few people in one day where I would just make one catalog. And then I would name it. I'm going to sneeze several times during this, so hopefully this doesn't become a thing. Um, I would name it, uh, like, all of their names in there and have one catalog, or a session, rather. But what I found out was that's kind of a pain in the butt because I like to organize under specifically the person's name. Um, so even if I'm shooting multiple people, like, if I have, like, a group of people, I'm shooting, like, five or six of them, I'll actually make a bunch of catalogs. I usually do it before they get there, so it's fast. Um, so I'll have one for Marissa, one for Sharina, let's say one for Erica, one for, you know, uh, you know Paulina, you know, uh, whoever the, the malls are. Um, and then if I do group shots, I'll make one that's called group and then all of them. This just keeps it more organized for me. So that's just how I do it. Um, but like I said, because you write something just slightly off and you can't find it. And you're just like, I know I did this shoot. And it's like mixed in with somebody else's. So that, that's just really my plan here. Hey, Rick. Yeah, I'm going to get the PC just for streaming because what I'm realizing is that... Um, I, I can be doing two things at once. <laughs> like right now, I'm oftentimes editing on my iPad in LumaFusion uh, videos. So while my computer's like chomping through like uh, stuff in Premiere. So I'm thinking that if I have just a separate computer anyways, and I was going to get another Mac, but I mean, since PCs, you need better for streaming and I'm doing so much streaming. Uh, I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. But who knows? Maybe I'll just break down and buy an iMac, but we'll, I'll probably build a PC. I'm sure I'll build a PC and then I will regret it and then end up buying a Mac like midway through next year. So that's, that's probably what's going to happen because that's typical Daniel uh, stuff to happen in life. Okay, so here's Marissa. looking. She's, this is her going, are you going to take a picture of me? Y y yes, I am. Yes, I am, Marissa. All right, so we're going to uh, edit, especially when we have so many to edit. We have 454 images here. Whew. We're going to take a look at her. Um what we want to do is we want to edit by removing the ones that we're not going to to, to, to want to, you know, present or move forward. Or we don't think they're the best. However you want to say it. Edit by removal. That's how we like to do it. So the simplest way that I found to do that is I select everything. 
and then I'm going to um, do my little uh, micro search thing here. No, I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm gonna hit the number three, which is gonna make them all. I'm gonna rate them all three stars. Okay, so they're all three stars here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to my search, my, my quick search. You can search whatever, but this is the quick search part of it. And I'm just gonna say three stars or higher. That means that if I mark anything at two stars, like this, I mark this one at two stars because this is definitely a no go. If I hit two, boop, it disappears. Ooh, down to the next one. So now my file is gonna have less images. I'm not getting rid of them. I'm just rating them lower. So I can always go back. Uh, yeah, <laughs> all right. These are lighting tests in the beginning, clearly. All right, so by the way, because I know people always ask me this, this is actually the, the Canon. People always ask me when they all use the Canon. I like the Canon for headshots. I will say that I left it in TTL, I think, for most of this, which I probably should not have done because it jumps around a lot in TTL. So we're going to see a lot of like slight variation, even though I had a huge flat light source. So, yeah, we're going to have to deal with that, um, unfortunately. Seth will guide me through building a PC. I'm not sure Seth knows that much about it. I'm counting on you guys to do it. Well, I guess, you know, this new motherboard or something came out. I don't know, whatever. That's like, so now I have to wait to see if I want that or not. Uh, but I figure if I build a PC that's able to stream like video games, you know, then it'll easily stream this and I won't have to worry about using multiple systems. Because like right now I'm doing all this on my laptop, but then I'm pushing it out to the Sling Studio. So I have to have my iPad over here. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, it works, but um, yeah. So I'm, I'm looking for a single PC uh, system, which I'll build some kind of tower. And I want to have fancy LED lights in it. That's like part of my, it's like when I go get a, go, go to buy a car, like, you know, it's, it's like, well, what kind of engine or whatever. I'm, I, I want it to be green. If it could be green, you know, that would be good. Yeah, that's, that's me with computers. Am I actually going to do the building or I probably are going to, uh, Build it myself. Yes, my plan is to build it myself. We'll see. Um, although, well, from what I've been reading, or reading, watching in videos, I call that reading now, so it makes me feel more, more smart. Um, it is actually a lot of uh, deals. Like, it's almost better to get them pre-built on some level, um, you know, because uh, parts are becoming scarce. But we'll see how that works. Anyways, I, I don't know. I'm not going to spend talking about that. Um, <laughs> am I going to start streaming D&D? &D? I already stream at D&D &D on my other channel. Uh, quite effectively, actually. Uh, all right, so. Um, all right, let's do this. I mean, this is not a great picture, but we'll start here. Um, again, this is a headshot. It's real simple. Uh, I'm using the lighting that we used uh, with the same lighting with, that we used at the second part of the uh, with Sharina. Uh, basically, we've got a... Um, here, let me go bigger than that. We've got a, a, an overhead silk. Right, my big even overhead silk with the head kind of close to it to give me contrast. Uh, and then behind me, I've got a V flat, and that V flat, I'm just controlling that as that's my fill basically. So when we look at her and we see the shadow pattern down here, and like you can see it under her hair and stuff, that would be very, very dense shadow if it was not for the fact that I'm filling from the front. You know, I'm just setting it up with the ratio that I want. Um, so doing, I'm just going to do a basic tweak here and then we'll go from there. Um, this one looks like, so I always do my levels. That's generally my main tool. I'm going to grab the, the bright level and I'm going to start to move it over just to get that pop of contrast. I mean, this is very flat light, so it's going to be hard to get that like T shine that it would like to get, but, um, just a little contrast there. Uh, I'll move my mid back and forth just to see if I want to adjust it. Uh, I think I'll leave it here for now, and then I'm going to go over to my darks, and I'm going to slide it over. Just so I can get, you know, you want that three-dimensional contrast, so she pops a little more there. So I can do the before and after. There it is. Oop. You know, we can see that. Got that. This is that. This is the before. Ooh, for a second there, I thought it was the other way, and I was like, hold on, did I screw this up? I'm like, it looks much better after. Yeah, yeah, it does. So, see, see before it was fine. Uh... But what I've done is I've effectively brightened her and given her more three-dimensional contrast. Like if you look at the shadow under her neck, as we move it over slowly, the shadows remains uh, right around the same, if not a little bit darker. 
but the highlights come up a bit. But like things like our hair stay pretty close to the same exposure, like in the back part of our head, just the front part where it's really catching the highlight as it going up. So that's giving us a nice pop. And that's it, nice and simple. You know, nothing too crazy. Um, there's lots of ways. I mean, there's ways I could have done this in camera, right? By uh, by by uh, increasing the contrast on the shoot. But we talked about this last time. Generally, with headshots, you want to keep them a little flat, you know, and then you give that little snap in post, and you're good to go. And uh, Marissa Sands makeup. Oh no, she's got so much makeup on here. So much makeup. Uh, yeah, I, what I might do is, so that I'm not in the middle of this thing, is uh, uh, if you guys are interested, when I get closer to doing the PC thing, I'll actually do another, I'll just come on and talk about it, because I know you guys have a lot of information, and I, I take all the information I can get. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I'll, I'll either start with the thing and then add to it, or whatever. Uh, all right, so yeah, this looks pretty good. Uh, she looks a little, like, uh, in this one, so... But I'm going to shift command C to copy those settings because I think the exposure is good. I'm not sure I love the expression. We'll get rid of that one. Uh, you can just see what it does if I just paste it again. I'm not loving that either. Okay. And, and, and I'll say that usually with headshots, again, like, no, oh, that one I love. Uh, I'm going to be more generous with what I'll keep because everybody likes different things. Like to me, that looks a little dead. That's got a little energy, but I know she doesn't like that one because I know Marissa. Look, see, so here's the TTL popping off on bright exposure. See how I did that? Pop, pop, pop. Um, I kind of like the expression there, though, assuming it's sharp. So I'm just going to roll back a bit on my exposure and see if I can. Yeah, that's good. This one I think is too hot, and also her arms are kind of a weird spot, so we got rid of that one. Uh, okay, now it went down. Damn you, TTL. I know, it's my own fault because I don't... I'm basically just hitting two on these. Like, I'm not liking any of these. We're the, the beginning, we're just getting ourselves into a groove. These are actually terrible. Okay, good. Keep going. Boom, 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 boom. Getting a little better. No, no, no. I'm literally just hitting two on all these. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, there's way too much of a cheese thing going on here. Um. Okay, no, no. <laughs> That's just a terrible shot, so I think I gotta keep it just for that reason. Too funny. I like me some cheese. Okay, hold on. I copied settings with the dart with the exposure slider, which I don't normally do, so I just hold on the dark side there. But that's just not a good headshot. No, no. This is probably at the moment where I'm telling her that all those first pictures were just garbage. And she's like, really? Yeah. Yeah, really. They're garbage, garbage. Oh, okay. They're garbage. Oh, my God. All right. Yeah. Oh, oh, hold on. Uh, so I pasted, hold on, the settings that has an exposure in it. So I'm going to actually, I could go back and just copy the not the exposure part of it. Oh, actually, I guess I could paste it. And then just go up and grab the exposure slider and put it back to zero. There we go. That's where we want to be. <laughs> no. No. There we go. After only 8,000 pictures, there's a good one. I'm keeping that just as silly. No. Like, that's okay, but it's a very high school picture. And also, I think she leaned into the light a bit. So, it's kind of hot on her forehead. So, I'll keep it just in case she likes the expression. But to me, that's not really good because of, because of technical things. Not to... Yeah, I'm not on that one. Okay. So, yeah. But see, you know, there, right? Boom. Easy as that. The thing is, is that nobody's going to give that like kind of half natural expression without uh, some coaxing. So it always takes a little bit of, a little bit of juice, and that's why, like I said this last time, man, digital like makes headshots. I th I find the session of a headshot much less stressful. 
Because not only do they get to see their pitches right away, which is huge. I mean, I know people that have started with digital are probably like, what? But, like, when I first started doing headshots, you would – people would um, hire you, and they you charge them by the roll. And, man, it was stressful because it was like if they were, you know, like some broke student and they could only afford one roll, so you got 36 pitchers. I mean, that's hard to get somebody to, to really loosen up. So you ended up with the – Headshots you used to be very very tight. Like everybody was just like, you know, and I think now headshots just have a much more natural feel to them because people can just kind of be loose in front of the camera until they get one that really comes. Uh, using the controls is great for demo. Have you ever used Loop Deck or similar MIDI-driven system for editing? Oh, you mean like, no. I mean, I have a Stream Deck. I suppose I could program in stuff with that. No. I think that would be super useful for uh, video editing maybe for me, but not for photo editing. I do so little. Like, what's the difference between me going, you know, pasting settings that or pressing a button on Loop Deck? I don't know. How many edge does you need? Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I think that, um, well, and again, it's not that you couldn't get good shots in five frames, you know, or whatever. I mean, many, many times, you know, you'll sit down with somebody and the first couple of shots are, are great, especially if you're just trying to get like a good portrait of somebody. It, when you're trying to kind of bring out that little something special, you know, that's like beyond them posing like what they usually look in the mirror and do a selfie, you know, I'm getting rid of these because her ear is gigantic and I didn't realize her ear was stuck out and I took her to put it in pictures. And then I realized and I was like, your ear is stuck out. Then we put it away. All right. Nope. Nope. She's talking to me. She shouldn't talk to me when I talk to her. There we go. Um, Right. What you end up doing is, um, in these kind of shoots, at least I do anyways, is I really try to make the person feel like they can just do whatever crazy ass thing that, that happens and, and react to what I'm, whatever I'm saying to them. And they don't have to worry about it. You know, I'm on a tripod. You know, I'm just half the time I'm not even looking through the camera. I'm literally just standing next to the camera with my finger on the, on the, the shutter and I'm firing. We're having a conversation. You know, I know that we'll get good ones. You know, there she is looking at him going, oh, that wasn't very good. Uh, you know, I know that we'll get it. You know, it's like it's not really an issue. It comes down to that, like, wanting that thing that's a little bit, like, look at this series. I'm literally click, 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 right? Like, this is like, boom, boom, boom. They're just a tiny bit of difference. And, you know, each one's just a touch different. Now, again, if I was just a new person, I would pick one of these that I like. I, but because it's Marissa and she needs a million shots and, again, I work with her all the time, I'm going to give her all of those. I think your lips are a little tight there. See, that's like a beginning shot. Ooh. Yeah. So I don't necessarily recommend, um, you know, shooting a million shots every time you set out to do stuff. Because you don't also don't want your subject to think that <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. Like, like literally, I tell her, we're going to shoot a bunch. You just go through this motion. We're going to shoot about 10 of them, and then we'll stop, and then we'll do it again. Uh, and that allows for us to, uh, you know, and then she does something silly in between to kind of like break that. And then we get a great natural shot, right? She would have never done this thing, right? If she hadn't done the silly stuff in between. If she only knew she had 20 shots, every shot would just be that, which is fine, but that is real, you know? And that's really what it comes down to. What, what, you, what you want for headshots, in my opinion, is that real stuff. What you only get in the, we'll call the in-between, you know? The shots that where they're not really posing, where you're not really directing, it's kind of like this 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 conversation that you're having um, that's going to allow you to, you know, create these images. And we can see, like, I, I told her to close your eyes and then whatever, I forget what I said, probably first I said, think of Justin Bieber or something. And then she just, like, worked her way through it, and then she was like, who? Because <laughs> she's too young for that. And then she was like, not Justin Bieber, I like Kid Rock, or I don't know. Kid Rock is, I don't know, probably not. All right. Uh, 
No, her ears are freaky. They're 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 terrible. Absolutely the worst feature. Yeah, she's don't 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 make her feel better. I on the other hand have perfect ears. So with the most headshots ever, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And again, I mean, maybe uh, at some point, we'll see. I mean, since we're in the middle of the pandemic and I'm not really seeking work shooting actors' headshots unless they're people that I know and I'm reshooting them. Um, it would be interesting, actually, to show you a session when I go, when I do one of somebody who's, like, never had headshots before who I don't know. Because it is definitely different, you know. They, they don't look at me like that, you know. Right. And also remember that we talked about this last time with Sharina that it, the headshots these days too are more than just headshots, right? It used to just be your eight by ten or whatever that you were going to get. Now it's website pics. Now it's Instagram stories. Now it's silly stuff that you know you're going to post on the various uh, you know sites that you're part of. So you really want to give them a lot of different things, and they won't give you a lot of different things unless you coax it from them. And oh man, it's hot in here. Excuse me while I undress. I turn off all the fans because otherwise you hear them on the microphone. The things I do for you guys. The things I do. Oh, I'm losing viewers. I'm taking my shirt off. All right. Uh, this is going to get... Okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, make your Twix text larger. I don't know how to make it larger. Someday I'll figure that out. I tried pinching on... Oh, hold on. No, see, if I pinch on it, it disappears. Now it's gone. Hold on. Can I make it a little bit bigger? Oh, I see. There's probably a breaking point. Oh, yes. Oh, no. See? Well, you can't see because I'm not showing you my screen. If I make it larger... Now I lost it all together, guys. There we go. I'll make it a little larger and see if that works. Now, see, if it does that, it'll leave... I'm on an iPad. That's probably why. Because I'm literally just blowing the screen up. I don't know how to actually make it larger. I'm sure there's a way to do it. And I probably should do it when I'm not live. So... Let's go back to this, and I'll just lean in, and you can just see the top of my head. What I really need to do is have it, like, suspended, but I'm way too lazy to do that. When I build my new system, I'll have a screen just for the just for you guys. That's part of the problem. OBS just, like, kills my computer. Like, if you look, not that you really care about my computer, but I am plugged in right now, and my battery is draining. <laughs> it's like, because OBS is just a beast. It's crazy. And I'm not even streaming from OBS. It just, for some reason, it eats tons and tons of power from the MacBook. Yeah. I'm not going to say what was going on during this picture. I am pretty sure that Sharina said something. Because I would never get that reaction from anybody. That would never be a reaction that anybody would ever have from me. That's more of a reaction that people have when they look at me. And you can see that each time we're working through this, you can actually see it going, going through this uh, this series, right? Well, this is very, very, very serious. So that's no good. Oh, nope. Cancel Siri. Don't even get me started. I didn't say, didn't call you. Shut yourself. All right, I think it's back. <laughs> the the uh, iPad decided to start talking to itself. Am I still good? Yeah, I'm still streaming. All right, got to be careful what I say. Yeah, we should get her in chat. You know, I tag her. She never comes in to visit. Marissa, Marissa doesn't show up for less than $10,000 a day. No, I don't know why. She should come in, though. She could be at Twitcher. Cranking. You can see this is that same blue background I use with Trina. No, oh, hmm. look at that. The exposure is slightly different on this one. So I'm going to come in. See, I kind of like this like purse lip thing. It's not normally something that I like, but on Marissa, I think it works for some shots. So I'm not deleting all of these, even though typically a purse, a purse lip is not, not my favorite expression. Like that's a little flat. You see, it's like flat, then boom, it just starts to break. And that's really what we want. 
Right, we'll say I won't yard that one. And that one. No. No, looks so funny. Yeah. It's also very interesting when you do headshots because each person that you're photographing has something about themselves that they don't like or that they like or whatever, and you, as a photographer, need to kind of get past that, right? Um, I mean, sure, get the shots of the things they like, but you've got to kind of convince them in a sense that you should be doing other things because sometimes they're wrong, you know? Um, I can't tell you the number of people that I've shot headshots for that, like, I've got tons of bookings after they did the thing that I told them to do. You know, because everybody views themselves, right, a certain way. And they're just like, they're looking at themselves in the mirror all the time. And they're just like, oh, I don't like this about me or I don't like that. Or I love this about me. And that might not be the thing, right, that uh, that will get them booked. This, on the other hand, 100%. There is no way that this will not get somebody booked. It is definitely, um, if you're ever doing a headshot... I mean, there's no sense in, in busting out, you know, really expensive camera and lighting in a studio in Manhattan to not take this shot. I'm just messing with me. I have to mess with Marissa, which is. But you see, after she gets herself loosened up, <laughs> she's like, <laughs> clearly I must have said something. Um, she's got that windblown look there. That's very um, uh, quaffed and kind of almost fire startery. I'll leave it because she likes her face like that. I like it when she smiles, but that's me. And I like the hair forward. Ah, now we're getting that squint thing going on with the little, see, now this is, a, this is this, Marissa. That's a good headshot, right? Without the, without the, without a smile, because I know she wanted one without a smile. You've got this little half eye cocked thing going on and almost smirk, this expression here. You don't see her giant ears. I'm actually going to mark this one because I like it. There we go. <laughs> that's maybe going too far. Oh, that's also good. Yeah, that's got the little... Uh -huh. Yeah, see, now we're getting into a good series. There we go. And this is what will always happen. You're going to end up getting, like, series of images in a row that are, like, great. And then some that are just not going to be so much. And that's the reason why you do them in bursts. Like the whole trick here is to shoot a bunch, stop, shoot a bunch, stop. And then every once in a while too, you're going to stop. Oh, that ear. Well, luckily it's not too bad there. That's the dead face girl on Snapchat expression. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I agree. The backdrop does it. Actually, really, we, we brought it down for Sharina because she wanted the blue. And then when Marissa stood in front of it, I was like, oh, yeah, this is definitely good. Uh, do you like dark decilabial folds? I think an on-camera axis fill could take care of that. Well, there is actually a... Uh, that, there is actually a fill light there. I mean, if there was not a fill light there, it, look at look at the shadow. That's the shadow from our key light. It's completely filled in. There is a fill light there. Yeah, I like people to have natural folds on their face, like an actual person, one hundred percent. In fact, a thousand percent. And and actually, what's interesting about that is that. Um, if you don't, she would look like a freak, basically, if she didn't have that. Because she's got a large, you know, she has big lips. She's got this, like, large kind of uh, mouth area. If she had nothing here, nothing here, it was flat. It would look crazy. It would look terrible. In fact, look at, go on to Inst uh, Instagram and type in beauty photography and look at about 89% of every friggin' photographer and you'll see how terrible that looks. It doesn't look like people look. Remember, an actor's headshot has to, to to represent what they look like. And, yeah, that's what she looks like. That is what she looks like, believe it or not. That giant ear and all. Man, I'm not photoshopping that ear out. I told her not to put it out, take it out. I think Sharina told her that her ear was fine. 
but I'm going to tell you right now, not so much. Although I'll say that when both of her ears are out, it's not bad. Cause then it creates like that Dumbo feel, which is like, or maybe like a, like a baby deer. See, this is what happens. Marcia gets, Marcia gets a lot of shade thrown at her because she's not here. If she was here, I'd have to say good things about her. All right, if you say the squinch again, you're gonna get kicked out of the, the, the chat. I hate that, but yes. Man, this morning I was like getting my coffee, which I mean, I get coffee all day, so it's not everything. And I looked out my window and there was a baby deer standing like right by my car. And of course I was thinking to myself, Man, I hope it doesn't scratch my car. But also, I was like, oh, it's so cute. And they have these like, giant ears, and that's kind of what she looks like. Yeah, I think I've already said. And then all of a sudden, she got the Rachel hair. Like, boom, it was the 90s all of a sudden. I don't know what happened there. That was that, that, That's worse. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what it should look like. A little bit of ear, not too much. Ba, ba, ba. So yeah, again, just because I said it and then I didn't zoom into that to show it for people that are late. If you look at the the lighting here, we've got a, this is actually a four foot square Shamira uh, full stop silk, uh, you know, hung, I guess on a C-stand, I guess. Um, basically, mm, it's a few feet in front of the camera, right over her, basically. And um, I'm shooting underneath it, clearly, you can see me there. And behind me, and I've got to be one through it. And behind me, I've got a, a V flat from V flat world uh, with a B one boot shooting into that as fill light. And I'm basically you can see yeah, you can see the ratios, right? Because you can see this one is is bright, and then this one's filling in, right? Because this is not brighter than that. You could of course control those ratios any way you like. Yeah. No. No. Somehow we lost it. It happens though. Yeah. I was excited about these. I'm lacking in excitement. And again, I'm just pasting those settings, uh, which is, if we look, I'll do it here again. If you look over here at the levels, you know, we're just dragging a little bit over on our highlight, a little bit on our mids, and then we're bringing our darks in just to make sure we don't lose that, that nice darkness. Um, and that just gives us that pop of three dimensionality. Um, we're not adjusting the exposure at all because exposure looks good. And if we jump in onto her onto her skin, we can see that, you know, you look at these numbers up here. You know, we're not blowing out. We're getting close in areas, but we're not blowing out. And you see this nice flat light, by the way? You barely see, but it's still there, so I don't have to retouch it out. You can barely see the, the scar on her forehead, right? But it's there, and, and I wouldn't retouch it out, so... So when people ask me and they're like, oh, you know, somebody has a scar, whatever, I mean, if you just light them flat, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll cover up most of that. That's basically the way to do it. Flat light is your friend in that case. Oof. This is the true test to see how many pictures in a row of Marissa you guys can look at before you explode. Exactly. Exactly. She does vintage very well. Are the actors really squinching or are they just being blinded by the bright lights? No, they're squinching. Although I hate that word because I think that's just like the stupidest, uh, stupidest thing. Um, yeah, the, the thing is, is that if you, there's kind of like, when you're kind of talking to somebody, just generally talking to them, like watch people from now on when you're talking to them, and they're actually listening to you, they do tend to get this like little bit of like, you know, little squint eyes because they're listening, they're concentrating on you. So when somebody does that in the picture, it actually makes it feel like they're connecting with you more. When you have that like deer in the, I don't think we did anything like that, but when you have that like deer in the headlight uh, model look that, you know, is very popular in beauty photography where they just kind of like, And they just, they're just nothing, right? There's no connection there. There's just a beautiful statue that you're looking at. In a headshot, we want that connection, right? So we want it to feel like she's sitting there across from us. I mean, I want, to, I want it to feel like she's sitting there across from me. 
I guess she was sitting there across from me, but I wanted to feel like for you guys that it was that she's sitting there. Like, what's it like to sit there with Marissa? Believe me, it's not not there. It's all cracked up to be. See, there's that exactly what I just described. That model staring at you flat. It's beautiful, right? Oh, it's like, oh, she's so beautiful. There's nothing there, right? There's no personality. It's just flat. It's just a pretty shot of a girl. Um, yeah, it does remove most of any of the, the again, the contrast in the face because you don't have, she's not smiling or anything. But it's just a flat, beautiful shot. Like, it doesn't, it's not a headshot, really. But I know she likes shots like that, so I will leave it there. Uh, whereas, like, even just that little bit of emotion, that little bit of connection where she starts to kind of squint her eyes down, she's starting to get that bit of a smile. Even here, right? Flat, same flat face, but with the, here, let's, let's look. Right? Just that little bit adds that, boom, she's connecting to you, right? Versus, I'm just standing here because I'm a flat thing for you to look at. So that's really what we want, right? We want that connection. We want the connection. We want the friendliness. You know, and then if we can get it, we want the um, the real kind of laughter and stuff in between for the fun shots, right? Uh, okay, then we switch to this outfit, which is like a pink outfit. Um, I don't. I think I shot one at a distance because she was asking what that would look like, and then we were like, no. And yeah, they're all close after that. Yeah, that's what I thought. So I only shot that one because it wasn't really for the outfit itself, and also just the nature of it. It just looks too like me. So we didn't shoot that one at a distance. Um, so she's got something going on there, that's for sure. All right, so I don't like that though. Uh, oh, now she's got that sophisticate look, right? So she is flat, but she's doing that kind of that almost a duck face, which is terrible, but not quite. Uh, and she's got the eye, the strong eyes. And I think I may have adjusted my exposure to a bit here on the, on the fill light. Can't remember. I should probably make notes. Uh, yeah, so it looks a little hot to me. But even with that being said, I'm still going to do my normal tweaking, which is slide over my brights. And ride my, slide my mids over. Oh, you know, I think she stepped off center, too. Like I said, the light's not quite, quite perfectly centered on her. I don't know if I did that on purpose or not. I can't remember. This was like two weeks ago. And I'm gonna bring the exposure to, no, I'll leave the exposure where it is. Yeah, that was good. We just, we just squinted that for a second. Sometimes it's good to come off of it and then come back. It's like, I'm fun. Oh yeah. I'm fun. Oh yeah. I'm fun. Oh yeah, I'm fun. I'm blah, 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 blah. Right? Simple. All right, I like that. Oop. Oop, did she get a little, She's like, oh, that's a gift, too. Oh, no. All right. Sorry. I like my gifts. I just said, no, might be a bit much on the squint. She has a little low. I'll leave it. She can decide. The top one's definitely good, though. Uh, Harry Potter's car, yeah. You didn't use any caps. Well, you were probably thinking about using caps, and they were just uh, shouting you out before you did it. <laughs> I don't know why it does that. But the the, um, the the Nightbot, I still haven't quite tweaked it out, guys, so I apologize if you're getting banned um, by Nightbot. <laughs> I keep saying I might do something about it, but I don't. Oh, I did look at it, and I couldn't figure it out. I was like, I have no idea how to control this, so I just went back and left it. Yeah, that's definitely too much squint. I'll leave it for her, though. She might look good. All right, that's pretty good. We're probably going to find that, um, as soon as I say this, I'm going to be wrong, but that the second outfit will be a little bit tighter. This one's a little more contrasty. I definitely I definitely changed my exposure a bit. It's a little punchier. Uh, I might actually roll back this, uh, the blacks here, because it might be too much. Yeah, just a bit. Uh, no. Nope. You know what she's doing here? That's wrong. She, I don't know why I didn't know so much. She's kind of pulling her chin back too much. Too much chin pullback is, is just, it's just weird. Get that little half smile. That's the, these are actual smiles. Okay. Those are fun, but no good. Yeah, this is like a little bit more of a, oh, 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 look. Oh. That's good. That's not. That's good, even though I like her posture here better. 
the shoulders back actually works better. It stretches her out a bit, gives us that definition. You know, here she's doing this a little bit more with the shoulders forward, and also she's got a point of your face. So no. That's the better face again, but her shoulders are still that way. Mm -hmm. No. So I knew it. As soon as I said these were going to be consistently better, I was wrong. Yeah, that's good, though. Yeah, I think I moved the, the light. I don't remember what I did here now, guys. I moved the, the Profoto B1, the B1X, I should say, for those people that are keeping track. Yeah, you can actually see it. Look at the, the, the square in her eye. I moved the B1X closer to the silk, right? Or maybe even lower. And what that does is it actually creates more contrast because essentially what's happening here is we're, we're shrinking our light source. When you're using a silk, right? You're, if you fill the whole silk with light evenly, then you got a four foot light source. If I fill just part of the silk, I have a smaller light source, but it's not just not the same as just using a smaller light source like a softbox or whatever, because you still have that like drag or fall off that rips across it and kind of has that wrap around. So by moving it in closer, it's creating that more contrast on her. And by creating more contrast, like look at the, well, first of all, the background changes, of course, right? Like look at the background and also look at all the shadow pattern and everything on her. Like see how that's, I mean, it's, they're both like flat, kind of flattish, clean light both filled in, right? But this one has just that pump of contrast. And that's, that's simply because I moved the light closer to the silk, creating like big and flat and kind of a bit more mature and moody, you know, here. Oh, oh no, no, went too far. Okay. So yeah, that's basically what I did there. I knew I did something. So you guys, I can, I can remember after a little bit, even when it's been a couple of weeks. I wonder though if I'm giving too much pump in this black, but I'm still a little nervous about that. I think I'm gonna bring my black back a bit. And I might actually even bring my, yeah, it might just be too much. I'm gonna go there. Let's try that. Let's just look at these two. Cause it is still a headshot. It's easy to fall into that, like trying to make it more like a portrait. Uh, yeah, flatter is probably better. So I'm gonna go with the flatter. I won't change the other ones, but I'll, yeah, see, she agrees. Oh, hold on now. Hold on now. That's kind of fun. Attitude is everything as well, of course. Now we've changed the attitude. It's kind of changed the, the vibe of the shoot. Huh. You know, maybe I do like that contrast. Now. It's hard, man. When you like doing like interesting portraits and then you do a headshot, it's really hard to not go too far. You got to really do what's going to work for a headshot. You know, you can't just start getting into all this funky lighting and stuff, even though you want to, because it's not going to be a headshot. You can do it after, you know, because again, they need stuff. You know, actors are going to need stuff for their other platforms. So you certainly could shoot a picture like this, which is, of course, that would be 100% the front of a comp card, you know, um, no, but you can try other things as you go into it. But when, when you are shooting a headshot, you need to keep in mind that that is what it is. And a headshot is not fine art, you know? It's not portrait art. It's a headshot. Uh, let's see. Engaging more facial uh, muscle adds depth. Yeah, that's true. Uh, watch no want to make a reply video to Zach Ura's last video, Photo Critique. Can we talk about fashion photography? Your summer's up with him saying, why are you taking pictures of a pretty girls if you aren't trying to break into the fashion industry? Uh, I don't talk trash about people or whatever. This is not my thing. I mean, maybe I'll watch the video if I have time. Um, uh, is that kind of like only using the inner diffuser on a Royal Lux Octa? I mean, if you only use the inner diffuser on a Royal Lux Octa, you will compare to what a Royal Lux Octa, Octa normally looks like. You will get a similar thing. No, no, not at all. It's the opposite. It's 100% the opposite of what you're saying. Because if you use the inner diffuser, only then kind of harder lights going to wrap around the inner diffuser uh, and what you'll get is um, 
kind of the opposite. You'll get more light wrapping around it. It would be more like using just the outer diffuser. Um, where you, on a smaller box, really, not even on like a deep box. On a small box with only an outer diffuser, you get kind of like a hot spot in the center and then it drags off. Um, although I will say using a, a, a Rotolux with only the inner diffuser is a, is a nice look. So, um, but not the same. I mean, everything is a little bit different, you know? It's, it's really hard to, 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 to say that something is the same because it's not. I mean, there wouldn't be all these different types of equipment if they, if they were the same. Uh, using a silk is just a very specific and interesting thing. And you find it a lot. I mean, I, I actually learned about it um, originally. Well, first of all, because we used to use them in, in Miami on catalogs, but more for just like an overhead diffuser. Um, but using them with lighting, I really learned about it uh, by watching like behind the scenes on, on uh, movies being made and then actually being like a set photographer on a few, you know, like indie films and stuff. And you see how, <clears throat> oh, my light, my voice. You see how these... Uh, these, you know, gaffers and, you know, well, directors of photography and then gaffers who are actually setting it up uh, use these silks in such unique ways, you know, to create all kinds of looks. Like crazy, interesting. The most interesting thing is how they use the, the Edivar Square Law, how they use a lot of very big lighting so that they can get it far enough away so they can get the fall off to make it feel very natural. That's actually one of the very primary differences I think between how we light for stills versus how people light for a video or you know movies is that stills photographers are you know if I'm teaching somebody one of the very first things I usually say is put the light as close as you can because that's going to create the softest light and give you the most control whereas in filmmaking a lot, a lot of times they restrict they have to put the lights far away so they really have to learn how to work like that and, and it is actually more difficult and really beautiful if you can make it happen. Uh, I could huh. reply without talking trash if you disagree. Okay, well. Um, just hanging out with Seth Miranda too much. I must be saying hanging out with Seth Miranda? Well, I don't understand what that means. I don't watch other people's videos and comment on them with, with a video unless they're somebody I know and they ask me to. That's just not my groove. Sorry. If you would like to do that, feel free. But that's just not my thing. There's already enough people throwing shade in this world for me to do that. Ah. See, that's an interesting squinch. Oh, now you got me saying it. I hate you all. Um, except because of the way the light is, I just think it looks weird. You know? Because, and I mean, now you'll, this is the one of the rare times you'll ever see me say that I'm on a catch light. But because there's just that hair of a catch light there, it's just weird. Um, with her eye closed that much, which is unfortunate because I kind of like that. I mean, not for a headshot, but I kind of like her eye shot. Like that's kind of an interesting feel. So that is the one time that I would be wary of, of catch lights is when you get them right in the edge of the, uh, of the eyelash. So it feels like there's something going on there that shouldn't be. See, this is interesting, right? Because this one is definitely not a headshot, but it's got this like softness to it that I kind of like. So I'm gonna keep it. I say it's not a headshot because of the, the, the mood it throws like that. You wouldn't necessarily want that. Well, maybe you would, I don't know. Not, I don't think Marissa would want that, but that would not be the mood that I'd put on a headshot generally. It's like, doesn't have enough, it's not gripping enough. You want that engagement, you know? You don't want that, like, uh, submission uh, vibe, typically, in headshot. Typically. I mean, there's never... I mean, unless your agent says that's what you want. You also don't want that. That is not what you want for a headshot. That's for damn sure. This could be all right. Uh. Good. 
These are all good. That's why I'm not saying anything. These are like stronger with no smile. They've got like a oomph. Why is the shape of her head changing? Well, that's a good question. Why the hell is Mercy's head changing? No, I didn't change lenses. Uh, in what way is her head shape changing? I'm trying to figure out. She got a little further away in some of them. No, no, I don't see her head shape changing. I mean, she opens and closes her mouth. I mean, her head shape is gonna change if she tilts towards or away from the camera as well. I don't know what you mean by head shape. Now I'm watching it because I'm trying to figure out what you mean. Maybe she's some kind of weird, like, creature that's... I mean, I would not be surprised if Marissa was some kind of alien. I mean, she definitely comes off that way. Yeah, and you know, what's interesting about what you say about the, about the head shape changing is that... Remember that it's not the lens, right, that's causing or not causing compression. It's the distance from the, the subject. So if, if, in fact, her head shape was changing, which I didn't really follow that... Um, it could just be because she's getting closer and further away from me. That's 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 way more to do with it than the lens. Now, if you're trying to frame somebody up exactly the same way with two different lenses of two different focal lengths, light lenses lengths, then yeah, it's the lens. But re realistically, it comes down to distance. The closer you get to somebody, the the more distortion you're going to have, the less compression. The further away you you are from something, you're going to have more compression. So it's going to tighten things up. In fact, I did a video about that. Check it out. With Marissa, of all things. With the Hasselblad. I did it. I shot with the 90, I think. And I went. I shot from further away. And I just cropped it to a certain you know, ratio. And then I moved in and framed it that way. And shot the same picture. And you can totally see how her face changes. Because that's the nature of it. Uh... Yes, it's also, you can see the lens. Yeah, I know. I shot, when I shoot headshots, I shoot with the 85. I don't know. That's my lens for headshots. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody learned a new word today. Okay. Nice. Huh. There we have a little hiccup in the in the TTL, I think. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, no. Unfortunately, the the light is pretty steep, guys. Even though I'm filling in a lot. Uh, you can see how steep the light is, so if her chin is down too much, it really is, uh, I mean, you can see it's gonna, how low it is there. You can really see the uh, the shadow in here a lot. So these ones with our chin down very far, even if they might be fun, are just not, not going to work for this light. And no, no matter how much fill, unless I made it absolutely one-to-one -one ratio, nothing would fix that. Because the key light is what's setting the shape. The only way that I, I would be able to have her work with her chin down like that is if I if I lowered my uh, my key more in front of her, like flatter. Because my key is, remember, it's... Well, I can't do it in this shot because the chin's down. Let me see it in this one, though. I mean, the key is literally, like... I mean, I'm, I'm putting it lower so you guys can see my head, but it's, like, the angle of it is, like, almost flat. It's almost completely flat to her. It's actually an overhead light. It's got a bit of a... Maybe, like, a like this much of an angle. So she's going to be very careful. And that's how you're able to achieve that nice shaping of the face with the, with the giant light source. If you didn't have that angle like that, it would just be absolutely flat, which, you know, is not what we want. It's not what I want, anyways. You guys can do what you like. Yeah, we can see here, again, I'm using the same lens, and I'm on a tripod, so she's moving, you know? So if you see any, you know, there she's closer, there she's further away, right? We can see that, like, yeah, her head is like, it's like two different people completely. It's like, there's no resemblance at all right there. No, I don't, I don't actually see the head change that you guys are seeing, which I think is really interesting to me. Maybe I'm blind. Yeah, see again, fun and, you know, kind of engaging, not a headshot, because it's just, there are chins down way too much for this light, but I'll leave it because of again, because of Marissa. 
Yeah, unfortunately, we really have to watch that light, you know. And the closer she gets to it, the more dramatic. Oh, what happened there? The more dramatic the 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 fall off will be. I don't know. I was trying to make it more dramatic. There. I don't know what happened there. All of a sudden, I dropped exposure by a decent amount. All right, we're gonna tweak that a little bit. I'm not loving that shot, anyways. Oh. <laughs> Of course, I shouldn't have done that. Go back to this one. I'm going to go back and copy this this one because I changed the... Uh... There we go. In fact, if anything, I might actually give this a little, little darkness. There we go. Oh, the darkness. Oh, I'm not a huge fan. This is more of a portrait pose for me with the shoulders turned, but it, does, it works. It's pretty. I just I don't like as much headshots. I like my headshots to be more flat on. But this does actually is good in showing off the shape of the body a little bit, because um, you know they oftentimes casting directors will ask if there's not a, if they're only looking at one picture they still want to see a little bit of the shape of the person. So short of doing like a three quarter shot, you can do something where they're turned a bit, and that will show you know more of the width of them clearly. Oh, there she is sneezing. Simon Garfunkel. <laughs> That's how you know. That's how you know. Oh, hmm. Okay. So she's a little more serious. She's like, why are you looking at me like that? Now I'm going to smile a little bit. This is more like perplexed, like, huh? And that's kind of, this is kind of like, are you talking to me? And this one's like, huh? And then, okay. And then she's like, yeah. Let me get dark. That's good. That's okay. Again, this is fun as a character shot. It's not really a good headshot. Her head's just down too low. Uh, I think with this outfit, because I spiked the light a little bit more contrasty, it, we were going to lose a lot of these as headshots because she, her head is down too much. You know, because she's, she's just being natural. Uh, is getting a good catch light uh, part of the art? You know, I'm not usually a catch light person. Like, I don't normally mention them at all. But every once in a while, they can be super distracting. You know, my, my general philosophy on catch lights is that if I'm shooting something that is clearly lit, then it doesn't bother me that you can see a catch light in their eye. Because nobody is thinking that this is some, like, outside in some park and it's natural light. I mean, it's clearly a lit shot in the studio. So if you can see a catch light... Um, that being said, if you're trying to make something look very natural, you might want to be weary of that. You know, that's all I would say there. And, and I certainly don't use them as part of the composition usually. Although, uh, if you were to watch my video last week, well, this week, as a new one hasn't come out yet, on uh, low-key lighting on Adorama, on Adorama TV on YouTube, I actually do, specifically in that shot, I try to get to catch light in a certain spot because it adds to the contrast of it. But very rarely is it actually a factor. I'd, I'd say 99% of the time. I don't care about it. There's people that spend their whole lives dealing with catch lights. It's not a big deal for me. But everybody's got their own style, I guess. <laughs> Ring like catch lights. God, definitely not. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, when you're getting a series of bad ones, then you just have to come down and break out of it. It's like a little crooked face action going on there. It's like she's got a piece of gum, and she's in class, and she's not supposed to have gum, so she's just, like, not. That's probably what I said to her, too. Uh, and she's just like, I'm not going to... I typically do not like hands like that at all. So I'm definitely not a hands person. I find they can be very distracting. No, all these are kind of bummers. There's something weird going on here. We're just not nailing it. Oh, oh there she's mad at me. I don't know what I did there. But I like it. That's more serious. There's many sides to Marissa.
No, that's the last frame. Look at that. Boom. Last frame was a. She was serious. I probably said, "Let's do one serious one before we finish," and then we had uh, a serious shot. You know, these are again because they're headshots. Uh, because they're headshots, and because again, she's more like a personality. You know, versus a lot more than just uh, want an eight by ten that she's going to put up somewhere. Uh, I'm being a lot more open with what I'm, what I'm allowing, as far as what I would consider a good shot for 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 this session. Um, if this was strictly like a new actor who'd never had headshots before, I would be a lot more picky. Um, and I would eliminate, you know, stuff that was kind of in the middle. And I would only go for the best stuff, you know. So just keep in mind who your audience is, you know. So, and I would also, like, I'd look at ones that are very similar. Like, let's say this set. This set. Like, those are those are all very similar. Like, they're almost the exact same expression. They're just slightly different body positions. So I would look at each one of these, and I would make a call of which one is the best one, which is probably that one. Yeah, that one. In my mind. So, you know, that's that's what you're going to want to do, depending on your client, you know. I mean, already, we got rid of half of them. We got rid of over 200 images. So, even even with keeping, um, you know, a lot of uh, kind of questionable, big-eared ones and stuff. It's almost like she's talking to you when you do that. Yeah. I think overall, though, again, because I think it's because it's Marissa, I'm not going to really edit these down more. Um, I'm going to keep these. You know, that's the kind of, like, youngish, cute, you know, vibe going on there. And then we've got a bit more of, like, a mature, sophisticated vibe here. You know, and then we've got, like, smiley stuff. You know, like, natural... So, you know, you're getting you're getting your variety. I definitely probably could kill a few of them, but I won't, like I said, because of who it is. What I might do here, if I was... What time is it now? I'm probably going to... So I don't overly drain myself here. Um, what I might do here is... Uh, if I was... If it was, again, if it was not Marcin... Well, you know, I'll do it quickly. I'll do it for you guys. I'm going to select everything and I'm going to make them four stars. And now I'm going to do a rapid edit and I'm literally going to hit either three as in mm, not good enough or down, you know, go, go to the next one basically. Uh, because what I want to do here is I want to cut down like half of these. Like I'll show you how I would do it if I was really trying to slim them. Before I do that though, I see people are talking. <clears throat> Every girl... Da, da, da. Could you do a more moody edit in capture one like fancy color grading? Uh, I mean, I could not on these. I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't do that so much. But I mean, you know, maybe. But yeah, I'd like. Uh, you definitely can do color 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 grading. Yeah, I don't just edit it moody. I mean, you could do like a color grading. I mean, this doesn't really call for it, so I don't know what I would really do here. But like, you know, there's all kinds of crap you can do. You can come down and do your curves and your vignettes, and you can actually, uh, you can actually go into the color. Well, I'll have to shoot something for it if I wanted to actually do that. It's not my normal thing, but you can actually come into your actual color editor, um, and you can go in and you can adjust independent colors, you know, if you want to do, like, you want to do film types and stuff like that. Um, you know, well, that's probably, like, you know, I can come in there and tweak out, like, that. that's where you, that's the yellows. So it's possible. It's just not really my vibe, especially not for these. I certainly wouldn't do it in a headshot, but, um, uh, let's see. Yeah, there's really nothing I would do to this, so I don't, I don't know, what, I don't know what I could do to make this more of a headshot with the color editing, but, you know, and of course there's also built in styles if you want to be like oh look i want it to be cinematic i can do this you know you can do all that kind of crap this stuff is basically i mean it's fun if you're just trying to figure out what you can do with capture one i find it to be not really worthwhile sorry capture one but to me this is like make your own you know i'm not, I'm not a big that but yeah maybe i'll shoot something that could use some some grading something cinematic a scene maybe um but not this 
I'll have to shoot something for it because uh, as uh, as was noted there, I shoot the way I want it to be basically. Uh, Uh, let's see, as a photographer, how do you find your style? I'm trying to narrow my portfolio, but I've shot a little bit of everything. Well, I would say that, uh, yes, I do actually have some videos. Thank you. Um, just as a general thing, I'll make a couple of comments. I mean, not to criticize your question, but, but to pick it apart a little bit. Your style should have less to do with the subject you're shooting. So when you say you shoot a little bit of everything, I'm assuming you mean like I shot some product, I shot some weddings, I shot some fashion, I shot some portraits. That's not your style. Your style, no matter what you shoot, should have your style. And your style is not a specific technique. Your style is not a specific area that you shoot in. A style is like your signature, your 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 fingerprint on the image. There's certain things that you do consistently that you probably don't even know you're doing. And what I just said to Patty Mates on on, on a, a similar uh, thing that she, she, she said something on a, a video was it's usually you don't necessarily find your style. Your style finds you. So what I would do if I was trying to figure out what, what is my style, I was trying to define myself, if you really felt like that was needed for the next step for you to move forward, because it will be at some point you're going to want to do that. Um, what I would do is I would... Um, Take everything you've got, like all your different variety of things that you like, and then look at them and try to figure out what it is about those things that tie them together. So I've got a picture of, you know, nature, and I've got a picture of food, and I've got a portrait, and I like all of these, and they, they, they seem to be, they came from me, they were my idea, they are what I was thinking. What about them is the thing that makes them mine? Now, this is harder to do if, and I'm not saying you're doing this, if you're just like, copying photo diagrams and buying posing books and doing what they say to do. And just, you've got to really be experimenting and trying new things to really start to find your style. Um, and that's the hardest part, you know, and like I say, it usually like, and, and sometimes, and I, I've said, I said this once in a, when I was being interviewed on the podcast that like, you're not a, this is a fashion thing. No, it's a thing. You're, I always feel like you're not a fashion photographer until people call you a fashion photographer. In other words, if you say I'm a fashion photographer, that doesn't make you one, really. What makes you one is when people refer to you and they say that about you. Like, I remember once I, I was going for this job and literally the client said, oh, well, we're not, we're going to pass on using for you for this because we don't want to use a fashion photographer. And I was like, uh, okay. But like, they looked at my work and they were like, you're a fashion photographer. I didn't say, Dan Warren, fashion photographer. I mean, I usually just say I photograph people, you know, uh, and I think you'll find that of most of the top fashion photographers, they don't call themselves fashion photographers. All the people that say fashion photographer on their website are not the people that are shooting for Vogue, you know, for the most part, um, with the exception of people that are with like agencies who then categorize them there. Um, you know, my point being there is that your style will come from what you are. Right. People will start saying this about you like people will call things out and they'll be like, oh, that's like a thing that you do all the time. And you'll just be like, is it, <laughs> you know, or like you'll look at something and you'll be like, like a, a model or a subject will bring you a photo and be like, oh, I want to do something like this. And they'll show it to you and you'll be like, oh, we could do that. And then by the end of the shoot, you didn't do that at all. You did something else that was I, hopefully better. That was your style, your take on it. Right. That's where your style comes in. It becomes the thing that you do no matter what. So that's a long-winded way to say that. But yeah, it's hard, you know. Uh, and again, I would take time to 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 ana analyze what you've done and see the, the line that ties it together. And that's your style. And yeah, and there's YouTube videos about that I go deeper into it. Oh. Hey, thanks, Just Justif. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm here I am on Twitch, so I'm glad people are finding me. Having a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. Whew. All right, let's do this. Ready? This is going to be a rapid edit. And, and I will often do exactly this, especially when I have a lot of images. I'm just going to literally, I'm going to put my finger on the three and on the down arrow, and I'm just going to go on my gut. And I'll probably end up with like, I don't know, two thirds or half as many images as I have now. 
when all is said and done. And again, three is, I'm going to put my search here. Two, three stars or better. So like when I hit three on this one, because I'm going to, because I feel like that one's a little high school pitcher. Um, nope, nope, I did three, not four. I'm going to go over here and go four stars or higher, and then that will be gone. Some of these I'm going to keep just because, again, she's a goofball. Like, that's a goofy shot, and that's definitely not a headshot, but I'm keeping it. See, and, I, and I'll do something like this. Like, right, you got these two images. Which one's better, right? This one's got a little inflection, but I think that it's better to have your head straight normally, so I'll get rid of that one. I don't like to turn face. Weird smile, weird smile, weird smile. No, no, no. Definitely not. No, no. And again, these are all not terrible. Let's see she made a face because I was getting rid of them, but they're not blowing me away. Like, I'm literally dropping every image that doesn't just grab me. And in the end, I'm going to... You also probably see that I'll have series of, that are all from the same setting. Eyes are flat there. Eyes are flat there. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Weird mouth. Half squint. No. Mm -mm. No. Yes. 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 Yes, yes, yeah, that whole series is good, yes. That's just a classic Morris. That's not really a good headshot. Doom, doom. That's better than in the beginning. Boom, no, no, no. Definitely not. No, 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 no. That's okay. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Well, I'm getting rid of a lot now. No. no. No, 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 no. Wow, there's not going to be many left at the end. That's okay, though. Don't be afraid when you're doing this. You just got to do it, right? And if you end up with no pictures, if you literally get rid of every single picture, that's fine. I'm not getting rid of every picture, but if you do, <laughs> it's totally fine because that just means that you got to go back and find, then you got to start salvaging. But uh, I'm not a huge fan of the ear, but I'll leave some because, you know, she does have that one giant ear. Actually, both of her ears are gigantic, I got to be honest with you. And it's a balance thing, right? If, like, both of her ears are out, then, you know, she looks like a baby deer, like I said. But if one, only one ear is out, then, you know, it's like a freak. Freak's going my right now. Freak's going my right now. All right. It's a different kind of freak, I think. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. sorry I'm being quiet, I'm just kind of concentrating here. Ooh, big eyes on that one. Fun. Ooh, serious. Serious. Ooh, the only thing I think here is this is a little electric for me. Uh, I'm stop, stop, stopping my massive edit to go back and just look at this. I might actually come in here and go into my, let's see, I might do a color thing. I'm just going to do it in general. I might just grab the satch and just drop it a smidge. Because I feel like that dress really is reflecting and getting, the, this is very colorful, which I don't know that I'm a fan of. I'm, I'm up in the air about it. So I might go in there and tweak that, but no, anyways. No, yes, yes, no, 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 no. These ones I'm going for the more serious ones because I feel like this works. Remember I went and looked with a little bit of a tougher lighting for this. Um, it's a little more contrasty. So I'm liking the stuff that's a little bit, at least those first ones. Then here I flattened it back out again, you can see. So it's like, this is a little bit better for a smiley shot. A little bit nicer. A little bit kind of cleaner, friendly. Wow, those are like three, almost the exact same shot. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Ooh, this one's a little dark in the eyes, but I'm gonna keep it just in case. Yeah, we're just kind of creeping through here, just going through really quickly, just taking the ones. I mean, in any studio session, you should encounter basically what's happening here. The first, like, handful of shots, I'm basically dumping, even though they were good, and they're just, they're getting better, right? You, you I sometimes say, right, you, you keep shooting, ah, you keep shooting until they get bad again. So you want to shoot until they get good, and then once you've got, once you get good, you just keep going, you know, until you basically exhaust yourself. And your subject, and then the end. Yeah, look at that, 110. I get rid of I get rid of half of the images, and there's still over 100 images here. Like I have no problem being like, okay, there we go, right? And these are going to be much stronger images than 
they would have been if I hadn't done that edit. And yeah, simple enough, although that one's a little bit dead too. Okay. They're definitely more dead in the eyes at the beginning. They get better as they go on. Like that's psh, classic. All right. <clears throat> Uh... Hey, Mike. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I uh, I think I'm basically done. It's uh, about almost 4.30 here. We got a bunch of good pictures, so I'll do that. Let's see if I can do this without crashing my computer. Last time I did this, and my computer started choking. So uh, I got about 100 images. I'll at least start this part. If it starts choking out, I'll let you know. Um, again, we're in Capture One. I already have set over here in my... Uh, process recipes as they call them. This one here is called model Dropbox. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna make me a JPEG, 2000 pixels on the long end. It's gonna make a folder named after the session, which is called the date and Marissa, so it'll be easy to find it. And it's gonna export it to my Dropbox in a folder that's called models. I just put everything's models for me, whether I shoot a product or whatever, I just call it models. So when I do this, once it's done exporting, I just give it some time for the Dropbox to kind of fill in you know, and actually get to Dropbox. And then I can literally just copy the link and send it to my subject. So it's super easy. Um, so let's hit this process. And we got about 100 images here. The computer's like, what's going on? Um, looks like it's gonna take maybe a few minutes, about three minutes. Let's see if there's any questions while we're... Uh... Oh, thanks, Trevor. Yeah, this was a fun one. Um, I did not shoot anything this week, but I have another couple of shoots that I did because I, I was under the weather. Um, I have another couple of shoots that I did though. So, um, we should be back next Sunday with some stuff that we did on location. So that should be fun. Actually, I think it's we'll be Marissa again. Uh, yeah, sorry guys. Give me a lot of Marissa. Um, but keep an eye out. Um, we're going to definitely get back on, uh, Adorama. Probably not this week, but probably the next week. Uh, oh, yep, the computer's starting to choke. I can feel it. Oh, huh. thanks, Richard. Yeah, you know, a lot of it is a feel, you know. Um, headshots are tricky, and it's one of the... <laughs> in many in many points in my career, in my career, uh, I've, like, gone down the headshot, headshot route to, uh, um, you know, to make extra cash or just as a little side business or because I was doing other things. And I, I tend to end up bailing out of it after a while, even though I've had a decent amount of success with it because I find it to be very boring, unfortunately. Um, it's actually, uh, some people love it because it's all about the interaction with the subject. You know, base head headshot lighting is just easy, right? You don't want to do... Actually, um, if you know Peter Hurley, right, who's a huge headshot photographer, he made a video. This is before he started making videos. He's all over the place now. But he made a video with, with Dev Stoppers, and he was talking about how, like, everybody's, like, so obsessed with his lighting. But because he was doing that Kino Flow thing. Um, now, I don't know what he's doing. Uh, but really, like, that's not it at all. Like, the whole point of his lighting was to just keep it simple. And, uh, and, and it's really about the interaction with the subject. And I 100% believe that. I think that, like... If you're into just like engaging with people and getting the best out of them, um, that's really what shooting headshots is about. It's not about the photography per se, um, because your lighting should be something that's very simple and doesn't take away from people. I mean, you've got to be good at your craft, clearly, but really, it's all about that getting that 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 true kind of emotion in the eyes and, and laughing and things like that, but also making it as a good composed photo. So. Yeah, it's it's fun and challenging. So, thanks, Jose. Let's see. I'm not sure what's going to happen. If we'll, I mean, uh, clearly, there's definitely not going to be anything for people that watch this that, that used to come to the the Adorama store. You know, we had actually tried to consider doing some off. I, uh, we were looking at doing some offsite stuff. We talked about it like shortly after the pandemic started, and we're you know, people were thinking that by the fall it would be, you know, maybe. Uh, safer to do things um not so much so unfortunately for that but because uh, i miss you guys so I, I do like these chats because we get people you know we get to interact 
which I don't get a lot if I'm just sitting on my porch recording a video. So I do appreciate you guys coming and visiting me on Sunday. Um, yeah, no, exactly, Richard. If you're into that, I, I just, I'm like a lighting fiend. <laughs> like I love to, I don't know why I'm just looking at this thing. It's done, by the way. Um, I love to mess with my lighting. Like I'm all about tweaking lighting and creating really depth. And, and it's just, you shouldn't do that. Which is, I mean, I think that's because my background was more in fashion and portraiture where, I'm, where I get to do that. You know, I can create weird, interesting lighting. Where headshots themselves for actors, it just they're really meant to be, show what they look like and get their emotions. They're not meant to be crazy creative as far as the lighting is concerned. So... And you know I got a lot of lighting if people know me, so I love to use my different stuff. But if you're just starting out, one of the easiest things to do is to get silk like I like I used in this one and do it outside. You know, you can put somebody in nice, soft, beautiful light um, with the silk. They can move around and you'll be able to shoot and get a lot of great shots without a lot of equipment. It doesn't take a lot. You could even, in theory, use a disc reflector um, and have somebody hold it. That's a little harder um, in the wind. But some, and they're also smaller generally, but uh, yeah, I mean, you can definitely create like really, really beautiful uh, headshots for actors shooting outside, you know, really, really simply. So this is a good area for people to tap into, especially now where number one, people want to be outside, uh, you know, for various reasons. And number two, because, you know, the sun is free, at least for now, until they can find a way to charge us for it. Okay, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, thanks for watching again. If you guys would like to be part of this, uh, be sure to follow me on Twitch, and you can join me on Sundays, and we can and see this happen live. Ask me questions. We'll talk about some different stuff. Uh, oftentimes, they're not always about that shoot. So if you have other questions and you just want to chat with me, that's that's the place I'm live the most. So if you do have questions, please feel free to follow me on Twitch and join me on these live broadcasts. Until next time, thanks for watching.